from Anshe Svar Beth El Emeth Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion of Parshat Ki Tavo, Keeping Together. In Parshat Ki Tavo, we have a description of a ceremony, a magnificent ceremony that took place when the Jews entered the land of Israel on Mount Rizim, on Mount Eval, near the city of Shechem of Nablus. On Mount Rizim, Jews would, six tribes would stand and bless those who would uphold the Torah and some of its principles. On the other mountain, Har, Har, Mount Eval, uh, Har, Har Eval, would stand six other tribes, and they would curse those who do not uphold some very basic premises uh, of the Jewish people, particularly uh, to not violate things in private and no one notices, uh, to be with God and follow the principles even uh, in private as well. The question is, if you had to pick which, which, tri- which mountain would you like to be on, would you like to give the blessings or the curses, surely you'd want to give the blessings. How did God decide which tribes would be on which mountain? So we simply have a division here, and we need to under- try to understand how God made this particular division. On the good mountain were Shimon, Levi Yehuda, Issachar, Yosef, and Binyamin. As the Torah more points out, most of them would be likely candidates for the good mountain. Levi, the head of the priestly clan. Yehuda, the king of Israel. Issachar, known for the study of Torah and the yoke of Torah. Yosef, uh, who, in, in, whose, in whose territory was the Mishkan, the tabernacle. Yosef, uh, who is the, the great-grandfather of of Yehoshua, who conquered the land of Israel, Binyamin, where in whose tribe is part of the Temple Mount, in whose in whose tribe is King Saul, who led the Jewish people, if even briefly, likely candidates for the good mountain, so to speak, those who are on the mountain of curses, Reuven, who's rejected as the firstborn, God, who is the firstborn of the of the uh, of the matriarchs who were who were the Shvachot, the, the, the Bilhan and Zilpah, and the other children of Bilhan and Zilpah, uh, who were known as the Shvachot, they were not the main wives of, of, Ju- of Jacob, and also Zevulun, who somehow, as between the two later brothers of Leah, Yisachar and Zevulun, uh, Yisachar is the primary brother engaged in Torah, Zevulun uh, is more of a merchant. So this would seem to be uh, the division. However, one of the difficult ways of di- uh, one of the difficulties in dividing the, the tribes this way is Shimon. Shimon belongs on the good mountain. Shimon was cursed by Jacob. He was left out of the blessings by Moses at the end of the Torah. I mean, how is Shimon on the good mountain? So Rabbeinu Abachi says that since Shimon gets such, such short shrift in the blessings of Jacob, where he practically is cursed, in the blessings of Moses, where he's not mentioned. Therefore, just to show that he's not really cursed, uh, he's just perhaps not as blessed as others, they put him on the good mountain. The Tzor Hamor said that, well, it's true, Shimon is a negative tribe, but you can't put all that negativity on the negative mountain. So we put him on the good mountain to sort of have a balance of harshness and softness, uh, all uh, uh, each divided more evenly. Actually, the Chizkuni suggests that being on the bad mountain is actually the opposite of what you would think. You see, because if you can stand there and curse those who engage in immorality, who don't uphold the Torah, that means that you do uphold the Torah. That means that you do not engage in immorality. And therefore, Ruvain particularly needs to be on that mountain because he was accused of having slept with a concubine. Uh, there is a question about his activity. Therefore, to show that no, Ruvain upholds the Torah. Ruvain is part of the Jewish people. He's on that mountain. So being on the bad mountain, so to speak, can be good for your moral uh, standing. Also, we need to understand that those who stand on the mountain of curses are not being cursed, God forbid. On the contrary, the Torah says as follows. The Ele Yamdu Levarechet Yisrael, those who stand on the blessing mountain, they're actually doing the blessing. Those who are on the cursing mountain it says, they will stand al haklala. They will stand on the mountain of curses. But they are not giving the curses. They are disassociated from the curse because it doesn't mean that you're actually uh, in any way cursed for being on that negative mountain. So perhaps we're making too much of the division. But finally, I'd like to suggest that if we look at those tribes who were 
who are on the rejected mountain, so to speak, we see an interesting phenomenon, and that is as follows. Reuven and God chose to live on the other side of the Jordan, away from their brothers, on the edge. They bordered the other nations of the world. Asher and Zvulun were merchants. They went out in, on, on the high seas uh, to, to Cyprus and other places out there to Greece. And therefore, uh, they too were living on the edge and were out in, among the Gentile nations. And Dan and Naphtali they live at the very border, northern border. We have a story in Divrei Amim and Malachim how when David was looking for, an, for someone who could be an architect for his holy temple, he brought someone from a different country, from the king of Tzor. And these Jews of Naphtali, descent of Dan descent, they lived among the Gentiles because they lived on the edge. We give credit to these tribes for uh, trying to uphold, trying to maintain these connections to the outside world, trying to uphold the borders of Israel. But the truth is, when you're not connected with other Jews, when you're not surrounded by others who uphold your values, sometimes you can be lost. The Rebbe of Slonim says that we say in the bracha of Sim Shalom, the last bracha of our Shemon Esrei, Barachinu avinu kulanu ke'echad be'or panecha. We ask God to bless us all together. Because when we're together, we can be much more susceptible to blessing. Those who live on the edge, those who live with one foot outside the Jewish community, although it's admirable, it's something we strive for, to be able to bring light unto the nations, to be connected with other people, to be role models, to, uh, to bring holiness to the outside. But nonetheless, this can be a very dangerous activity. And our job is to surround ourselves as much as possible on Shabbos, in our davening, to our shuls, to our neighborhoods, we can surround ourselves as much as possible with uh, other like-minded people, people who can, who can enhance uh, and uh, can uh, underscore these values for us uh, so that, indeed, we can be bolstered in our own values and what we believe in. So if we ask ourselves, why are these tribes on this mountain? Why are these tribes on the other? Those who are able and blessed to be able to, to live among themselves, to be surrounded by other Jews. These tribes did very well, and these tribes would be subject to great blessing. Those tribes who, who unfortunately had to live on the edge, this, in the end, was very dangerous. As Jews here in the diaspora, we all live here on the edge. The question is, can we surround ourselves with enough Torah, enough shuls, enough batei medrash, enough day schools and Jewish education, so that we can indeed not be lost like the six tribes, but instead be the source of the greatest blessing. Thank you for joining us here at the Anche Sfar Beth Lameth congregation uh, today for our discussion of Kitavo. Please go back to our archives to see other discussions uh, as well. And please join us each week as we continue to learn Torah together. And thank you, Jason Lefkowitz, for making today's presentation possible. Thank you. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. 